Let's take a moment now and discuss one particular approach for storing files on the hard drive. We're again looking at the directory which contains the project that we just created. Here we see all of our files and our controls are resident at the root level of this directory. This can become a problem if a project gets larger and larger and larger. It's not unheard of to have a LabVIEW project which contains 1,000 or 2,000 VIs. So it's very important at a very early stage to decide the structure of your directory. One approach is this. Create a folder called subvis, a folder called functional globals, a folder called controls, and a folder called exe builds. This is a structure that's been found to be particularly useful if we set this up at the very beginning, then whenever we create a sub-VI, we place it in the sub-VI. Whenever we create a functional global, we store it in the functional global. Whenever we create a control, we save it in the controls directory. So we can, for example, right now sort each of these individual files We can even go and grab the VI which we used from that other directory, place it into the sub-VI directory, place its support VIs inside the sub-VI's directory. So notice here in our sub-VI directory, we can have additional subdirectories within it. This isn't a bad idea because it helps you keep things structured and it helps reduce the likelihood of having hundreds or many hundreds of VIs sitting here and making it very difficult to sort things. The one thing to be very careful of is, in this case now, we've just rearranged the locations of all of our VIs. If we return to this project now, notice how we see here a series of warnings. It tells us that the file has been deleted, renamed, or moved on disk. This is a very important point. If we ever go and move VIs or sub-VIs or controls which are being used by a project, the project is lost and doesn't know exactly where to find those particular files. This is a real problem. And this is why it's very important to structure our directories very carefully before we start. An alternate approach, or approach which can be used in conjunction with the Project Explorer, is to use a VI which never runs. On this VI, we're going to put a series of sequences and just label them our subVIs. our functional globals. And any others, such as other important functions. And what we can do is use this, kind of like the Project Explorer, to contain all of the important VIs which we want to use. We can even, for example, capture some of the most likely sub-VIs we're going to use. For example, say we're going to use write to spreadsheet file a lot, build array a lot. We can put copies of these functions here so that we have easy access to them. And we might save this VI as for example, my VI project. It's important to understand this isn't a project VI, it's just a convenience tool used to store a series of the key sub-VIs, functional globals, and other important functions. The other benefit of creating and using a VI like this is that this VI can be added to our project at the very end, or at any stage in the middle. If we were to say new project, LabVIEW automatically asks us, because we have a VI open, if we want to add that to the project. If we say yes, it goes and creates the project which contains my VI. And it has automatically within the dependencies listed all of the sub-VIs. The other thing to consider when dealing with this type of project VI is we may want to put the entire thing within a case structure, create a control, make sure that control is set to false, 
And then we don't have to worry about inadvertently running the VI. What can happen if we have hundreds of our VIs structured here for convenience? If we accidentally run it, we can easily get into a situation where we have uh, a lot of undesired effects happening. It can be very frustrating. 